Good morning everybody. Today we're going to do texture hands. So what we're going to do today is start off by the most simple thing in the world. We're just going to put our hand down and we are going to draw around our hand. This should take you almost 20 seconds. Try and make your pencil nice and straight so that you don't end up with big fat fingers or you don't end up with little skinny fingers, okay? So when you take your hand off, it looks about the same. All right? So you can see there, I've got five fingers and a bit of a wrist. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna turn each finger into a texture, and we're gonna turn your hand into something, your wrist into something, your background into something. You can see that I'm working on A4 paper, so I haven't actually got that much room to wriggle with, but if you work on A3 paper, or even better, A2 paper, you can actually come up with something like this. So that was where I started off, just working on one hand. And you can see that obviously what I've done is I've t changed all of the fingers into different textures, and then I've just expanded. And then about six months later to a year later, I can't remember what, I expanded again. So you can see that I turned it into a, a giant A2 picture texture and it's ranging from you know a giant tarantula cl climbing at one hand, a frog climbing at one hand, a snake smashing the bricks down, uh, I've got a basketball there, I've got a skull, I've got a little Bulbasaur from Pokemon, I've got a dung beetle rolling some poo there, I've got a Hard Rock Cafe burger, you know my imagination went a little bit wild on this one. So that's where this can go if your paper is large enough. Uh, Choose your paper wisely as well. That paper there was quite soft, so you can see it's come out quite dull. Whereas this one here, this paper's really nice and shiny. And uh, you can see that, obviously, the, the tone of the pencil is a lot better than that one. All right, so let's go back to the beginning then. So first of all, I want you to draw your hands. So if you followed my last video, what you should have done is you should have had a go at drawing various textures like this with texture shapes. So we're going to take those skills and we're now going to convert them into, well, pretty much just drawing the fingers. So on the first video, Texture Juxtaposition, I showed you how to draw brick and fish scales and fair. And then on the last video, the texture shapes, I taught you how to draw wood and metal. So we'll, we'll try and do different textures. Uh, I'll chuck in snake skin, octopus tentacle, and what's another good one? Oh, a cactus is a good one. And then one for all the zombie lovers out there, we'll do a severed finger. So, right, start with the, the cactus. So obviously we know that cactus is nice and straightforward. Just add the old textbook cactus shape, like so. So already that's looking a little bit cactusy. Then, get rid of those little lines there. So we've got the shape of a cactus. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use this as a center point, and we're going to come down like so. And we're just going to stop there. So now, our finger looks like a cactus. So that's like the simple version of a cactus there. Now to make that just a little bit better, what we're going to do is we're going to change from HB to 2B and I'm just going to start adding some little slight turns throughout. Now this is where it would be very, very handy if you had a smudging tool because you can see that that space isn't very big. So you're just going to be very, very gentle if you are using your fingers. You might want to just wrap up a little bit of tissue paper so that you can use it a little bit more precisely. Or you might just want to splash out and get some, some smudging tools. Smudging tools are absolutely great as well to have in your uh, pencil case, especially with a little bit of sandpaper. And you can just 
use them over and over and over again and they, they really do last forever. I just don't have any on me right now. So you can see that once I've started doing all of these little sections here. Now again, just to explain the light source to you, I'm pretending that the light is coming in around here. So it's pushing, can't get to that last little bit. So it's obviously going from dark to medium to light. So now once I've got those dark and those kind of soft tones, I'm going to have to blend them in because you can see a dramatic change from the, the line that I've drawn to the smudge that I've created. So how I'm going to do that is I'm just going to curve my pencil a little bit into kind of like little sphere modes like this watch so just really really softly until I've blended it in and then that tonal change the tonal change should look a little bit smoother now so start off by putting in your original tone and smudge it a little bit and then blend it in So as you can see there, I've kind of done that now. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just jump straight into my 4B and I'm just going to add tiny little spiky bits like a cactus does, like so. Just dot them about everywhere, make sure they're all pointing in different directions. Try not to bunch them up. And it should, fingers crossed, start looking like a cactus. There you go. Alright, the next one that I'll teach you uh, is... What will be another good one? Another good one, but it takes ages. So I'll just show you how to draw it. It's an octopus tentacle. So what you can do here is you can just flick your finger a little bit. Get rid of your thumb. So now it's just turned into the fact that your finger is an octopus tentacle. And then what you're going to do, you're going to split about a third. See as I added that, that third kind of turned into half. And what we're going to do is we're going to put little circles going up. The little suction. Uh, I don't know what they're called. I'm not going to pretend like I do. Little suction pads or whatever an octopus have. Uh, put them up. Might want to add a little bit of water on the end. So it looks like the octopus tentacle has come straight out of the water. And then just like I explained with the circle in the previous video, I'm just going to then curve that like that, going with the contours as much as possible and then that kind of gives it this lovely effect and then I'm just going to continue to replicate that line there all the way up if I can and now I've got a bit of a neck going on there. And then I'll just make those shapes there a little bit more 3D. And maybe some of them going around the back and coming out the other end. Like so. So that's how you draw a tentacle. Now the hard bit is to add the shading. So I'll just show you really quickly how I do the shading here. Just to add to one side like that and 
and then smudge that out so that it just blends into the hand. There you go, that's how I'd do that little bit. Now the inside, I'd go from a 4B to a 2B, and what I would do is I would just add a little bit of turn again there. And again, like I said with the cactus, if you had a real nice little thin kind of uh, blending stub, it'd be a lot easier to get into all these tiny little spaces and add a little bit here and here maybe. So I'm just going to try and be extra, extra soft with my pencil kind of done it there, that's alright. It's just so easy to mess up and then when you mess up you rub out and you take a big chunk of your drawing out. So you can see there that I've added a certain kind of little depth to it just by adding that tiny bit there. Okay, so that's a, an octopus tentacle. Right, now one for all the zombie lovers. So this is a really good one. Students normally love this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my little finger and I'm just going to draw a little oval like that and then I'm just going to have a little bit of bone sticking out like so and then a little bit more bone and then just point it off like so so it looks like it's in a glass case so we just get rid of that because obviously that's just an outline and now that allows you to just get in there, show all the blood dribbling down and all the bits from where the zombies bitten your finger off. And then maybe a little bit dribbling down there. There we go. So there's how to draw a, a bitten finger, shall we call it. And then another really easy one that's very similar to the uh, the blood dribbling is a candle. Now I don't actually have a candle on my demonstration but I'll show you how to do one. So you just again kind of stick with that oval kind of idea like so but then instead of finishing it off like that what you're gonna do is you're gonna dribble it down the sides of your fingers like so and then just curve that off like so and then just like I did with the finger, just get rid of the, the end of the finger like that and then you're just going to give a little wick and then a little bit of flame and then ever so softly with your pencil, hold it on the side and then you can just draw a little bit of smoke coming off where your flame is burning just like that okay so there's four textures for you should we do a fifth uh, let me think of what the fifth could be could try and do kind of like a, a reptile skin it's quite a tricky one but it's, it's really good so what we do for that is we just kind of get from the edge we just curve it in like so like that so it's got like diagonal kind of loops and then we do exactly the same Go in the opposite direction. So now instead of having those lines in there, we've now got diamonds. All right. So now what we're going to do with those diamonds is we are just going to shade them. In fact, I'll show you what's actually better than that. So you see this edge here, how it's straight. It's a little bit boring. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw each individual shape coming off the side of the finger like that so that now when you look at the finger it's actually three-dimensional
not only the edges of the finger as well, it looks so much better on the inside when the shapes are a little bit rounded. And now, can you picture a snake? It's kind of like that. Good. So that's how you do that. And then just like the cactus and the octopus tentacle, we're just going to shade in little areas like so. And now if you're thinking right back to my uh, texture juxtaposition video, what I did on that one was I did bricks, but talked about a cobble kind of road, you know, like you'd get in an old, old city like Lincoln or York or even London. And what you'll see here is it's starting to look like that. So obviously what I want you to do today is just have a play around with this, come up with your own textures, try and send me images of your own textures and what you've been doing. Anyone that gets like unique textures that I've never seen will be superb because I've been doing this for about three or four years and uh, I've seen some really fun ones out there. The classic is a, a mermaid's tail, people love doing that, or even just a fish tail. Uh, lollipops, like imagine like a calippo that you'd have in summertime. Students love doing that. So there you can see that it's just kind of come to life with the candle. You can just kind of add a little bit of tone. So, do the same for the bone. The bone, you could just go up on one side. Cool. So well, there we go. There's a little demonstration on a five-finger hand. So please start off by doing that, draw that. Obviously that's just taken me 20 minutes. So I'd like to think that you lot are gonna spend a good hour or two on this. So please try and have a go at that. And then when you get finished with that, please expand it and expand it and expand it. So obviously I showed you this before. So now if we look at that and you think that I've just done that in 20 minutes, if you spend a little bit more time, fill out one hand and then try putting your hand in different positions like obviously I've gone like that and then I've gone like that for that one and then I've attached a frog a little anchor you can see that I've got this giant tentacle that's hooked onto the feather you can see that this snake in fact I'll just show you this again so this is actually a big a double page spread at this point and you can see that the snake actually brings them both together look and he's coming through and he's, he's smashing a little hole in this finger here and then on this one you can see that I've used all different balls I've used the the world an eight ball a skull uh, a brick ball and then a basketball and then I've done like a hanging basket with wood and rope on it and then it's all brought together by this guy here the spider and then he's spun all these cobwebs all over Right, so the last thing that I'll do before I turn this video off is I'll just show you how to draw a cobweb because people love drawing the cobwebs. Okay, so you've got your, your textbook cobweb that people always draw, you know, that we see on Spider Man's chest where it's just like that. So we just draw our lines coming out from the center and we do that. So that's your textbook that everyone remembers, and then you draw your spider coming in like that so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do that but a little bit more loose so you normally hold a pencil like this try and hold it a little bit like that so that you kind of you haven't got ultimate control over it and what you're gonna do is just put your pencil on the page and then just kind of go with a nice straight line when I say a straight line the reason that you're holding your pencil so loose it's because you don't want your lines perfectly straight. You just want them a bit, little bit kind of, see, it's not straight, it's a bit, a bit wonky. So imagine that that there 
is a center point. You know how Spider-Man shoots like this? That's the center point. They're all coming out from there. And then just like this, what we're going to do is we're going to do lines, but instead of doing them really comic-y, we're going to kind of just do them a little bit more loose and add some little bits like that. So it has the same effect of that. And this is just a really good way of you just to kind of block up some of that big white space that you're going to have left when you've drawn. But it kind of looks like a spider's web. Okay. And then you can obviously draw like a large spider coming in or something like that. So if you are needing any other images like a frog or a spider, what I would suggest is that you type into Google pencil drawing of, and then you do that. All right. Thank you very much. Please upload all of your work.